What's up, everybody? It's Pat Healy with Brooklyn Boxing Podcast. We got a new episode with one of the rising stars in boxing, Mark Castro. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for joining. I hope this Zoom is working all right. We, uh, we're making do with Mark right now. And he is one of the rising stars in the sport, three and oh, three knockouts. And, um, you know, your career has just been taken off. You obviously have a deep amateur background and it all started at the age of four years old with your dad training you. Um, he was a boxing trainer. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about the beginning of your journey in boxing at the age of four. Um, the journey has always been there, like being in the gym every day. Um, the way I can explain it, it was a chore growing up. Uh, there's no way around it. Like I had to do it. I had to always be there at the gym. But I just was there all the time. Never really complained. I, I learned the sport. I learned what it took to be in the sport. But at the same time, I didn't really enjoy it. Like I didn't have the passion wasn't there. But just I just needed to be there there was but the thing I learned from the sport it was is it was demanding but at the same time my mind was not there at the sport. I wanted to play soccer I wanted to do other sports but then loving the sport so when you said like you started out and you didn't really love the sport right away um was your focus like you said just on soccer and other sports or was it you didn't really like uh, getting hit or being in the gym at such a young age. I'm, I'm curious, like at what point were you sparring or at what point were you, um, you know, probably not until 10, 11 years old, right? No, I was sparring since I was like four years old. Wow. wow. <laughs> like sparring other kids. And like, that was my workout. Like I would ask my dad, like, what would I do? He was just like, you'll never hit the bags. He said, we'll, we'll do the mitts. He's like, I'll warm up with you. And then I'd probably have my other fighters hit the mitts after, but so like your main thing was you spar, like we used to draw a lot of crowd. Like me, my dad had a younger son as well. And they used to put us to spar each other and like, like on sparring days, but like sparring for the public, like we would have like basically like an exhibition and just wow. have kids just fighting. And, and for me, like, and my dad would just say like, you weren't scared of the, like, the people, the audience, you kind of loved it. So it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing to be, to be that young sparring. But at what point did you start to really enjoy it then? Cause you had such a great amateur career, like 17 national championships and, you know, world championships. At what point were you like, Hey, I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind this now. I, I'm not missing playing uh, soccer. I want to be, I want to be in the gym. I want to be boxing. Uh, when I was um, 15, 16, when I went into high school, I got 14. Um, I decided I was not going to try to pursue any school sports. I just didn't like, want to. I'm like, I'm going to focus on boxing, see where it takes me. And then from there, there was nothing like, just focus on boxing, see where it goes. And then when I started, when I won my first uh, amateur world championship in Russia, it's kind of like, okay, like they told us, oh, they're looking at this team for the future these you guys are the future they kind of told us of usa boxing and from there it's like all right i kind of believe in myself then the next the next year i won it as well but this time it was a harder bracket it was older guys and i was the young, youngest guy on the team so i won it again so it's kind of like all right like i got a passion for this it was kind of like i have a passion for like winning like i know how to win yeah, that's very interesting to hear about like the mental side of your game and and learning how to win and, and getting on a roll like that. And obviously you kept that that winning uh mindset through the amateurs. It's carried you into the pros now. But before you know you made the launch into your pro career, you had the decision of um going to the Olympics or or jumping and signing with Matrim and going pro. Talk to me a little bit about um, that process and like what, what went into the decision to go pro rather than, um, try to compete in the Olympics? Uh, the main decision was, um, so I couldn't qualify through USA no more. 
um, since I had gotten uh, food poisoning at the, the last Olympic qualifier tournament. But um, I feel like I should have, like, hyped, but how do you say, like, I should have got a spot at the trials, like, given a chance, but, like, due to my credentials, but I'm not going to, like, go on there, act entitled. So, like, well, I will, like, put that to the side. I could have went for Mexico. I could have went for El Salvador. Um, and I just didn't, I weighed all the options. Some days I'll wake up and talk, oh, I want to go to the Olympics. I wanna, the next days, uh, I want to turn pro. I don't want to do the Olympics. So it's just like a never ending like cycle every single day. But then one day it's just like, nah, like I think the right choice is going to the, to going pro and I have a great, I feel like I have a great deal in matchroom. I feel like this is my opportunity. This is like my moment for turn, turn pro. And I feel like my amateur career is, it was a great one. And I feel like it's my time to turn pro now. And how exciting is it to be signed with, with Matram and be on the zone and, you know, make, be on the same card as, as Canelo fighting on his undercard. So many um, of boxing biggest names over there with Matram. So what was it like when you got the call from Eddie Earn? Um, to be on the card or to turn pro or like to turn, to turn pro and sign with Matram. Um, well, my manager and my, my dad handles all that. And it was like the manager that told me, that, Oh, there's a manager. Like there's always managers pursuing us and promising things and saying things. And like, and like I kind of, when my manager, he like, he had gotten in contact with my dad and it, it sounded like the same riddle, like, Oh, we could do this for you. We can do that for you. So it's like kind of more like of actions. Like I'm, I want to see it. Then he told me like, oh yeah, like he got Eddie Hurt on the phone. And then eventually, they eventually, uh, we set up a meeting and like, then we met him in person and I was kind of like, oh damn, like this is real. Like it, it went down. And then a couple months later, like, um, how you say it? They just kind of like, we got a deal in play and the deal was there. And like, they're like, it's up to you now. Like you decide like, you go wherever you want, you do whatever you like. And it just feels like, I don't know, it's surreal. Like it doesn't feel real at all. Like it's kind of like, Oh my God. Like, like if you actually think about it, you're like, I'm in this position to change, like change my life and like change the life around the people around me. And was that your, was that your dad's goal? You think from the beginning was to make you pro or was it originally the Olympic route? Did he ever kind of express to you like what his master plan was? Obviously you had you in the sport as a kid. So he must have had a plan in mind of where you were going to be going. So this is like the story like about my dad and all that. Like my dad, um, first he wanted to introduce us to the sport as a sense of like self-defense because I have three sisters as well. Uh, self-defense, but then as well, like a learning tool, like learn about life with like time management, self-discipline, like things like that nature. But then, like, like we would joke around because I would tell him, like, I'm going to be a professional boxer. I'm a professional soccer player. And he's like, no, you're going to be a professional boxer. But, like, he wouldn't really mean it that way because, like, then eventually came to a point where my dad, had, he had his own gym, but then he's all like, I'm tired of boxing. His fighters would kind of, like, leave him. And, like, like they'll just kind of, like, they didn't realize my dad had the best interest. Like, they'll take the big, they'll see a good fight for, like, money, and my dad would be like, no, don't take that fight. You're going to lose. You could take three or four more fights. You'll win them. And then that check would be bigger. Like, yeah, my dad. So basically my dad shut down the gym. And then that's when I told my dad, like, let's, let's kind of, let's do this boxing. Like let's, let's keep boxing. Cause it was my way of at the same time to show him, like, I know this is your passion. Let's keep doing it. But like, it was kind of, I was not invested into it yet. I was like 11 still. 11 or 12. And then, then we started going to nationals and then I started winning, but like, I didn't realize what nationals were until like <laughs> I got older. <laughs> yeah. But while you were having all of this success, like in high school through the amateur ranks and, um, you know, winning these tournaments, you were still having awesome success in the classroom. You were uh, val valedictorian of your, your high school, which was like crazy as super impressed to see that. So, when you were in school, people probably knew you as, man, this kid, he's, you know, taking boxing so seriously, so disciplined. 
but you're also doing your thing in the classroom as well. Um, a lot of people probably didn't expect that out of you, right? Um, yeah, it was crazy because like my parents just taught me like anything I do, like give it your all. And that's what I basically did. And like, I know I was capable of doing both, but like it did take a lot. It does take a lot out of you, but no excuses. You just go and do it. Are you still at uh, Fresno State? Big uh, no. Not yet. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm still there, but um, the it's the summer now, so I'm not at Everett. No, so no summer out. classes or anything. That's nah, good. That's summer. Out. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you now you got your focus obviously on on, on the pro ranks. And you've had some amazing um, fights early on in your career. Being on the undercard of Canelo must at AT and T Stadium. The last fight, um, I mean, what's better than that, right? Fighting on Cinco de Mayo on a Canelo card. You got the fans, the atmosphere. Talk about the the buzz, that energy that you experienced so early on in your career. Um, the energy, the fans. It's all crazy because like you hear about it. You- like you go as a fan. So I've been to the big events as fans and like being there. And it's one experience to be as a fan, but then it's another experience where like you are the, how do you say it? You're on the other side. I'm the boxer. Like people are cheering the oohs and ahs, but then you're walking to the ring, people shouting your name. But then at the same time, like you want to soak it in, but you can't because if you focus on that, you're not focused on the fight. So there's like a fine line you have to walk where like you're enjoying it for yourself but you have to you have a task at hand you need to handle but it was great to fight on there handle my business but then it was even more awesome to like experience canelo like watching canelo after that was the best best yeah yeah i've seen past interviews of 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 you talking about getting to see canelo train firsthand and how hard he still goes to this day even when on the top of the sport so it must be super motivating just to be around him but there's one fight I did want to talk about. Um, I believe your second fight against John Moraga is a former UFC veteran, um, which is really interesting. I, I, I want to get your perspective on that fight and maybe what it's like to fight a MMA fighter, the awkwardness maybe that they bring um, throwing from weird angles. If you experience that at all, it's obviously kind of a hot topic right now in combat sports because there's a lot of crossover fights and talk going on at the moment so did you experience some of that awkwardness from him um yeah like we knew like he was a ufc fighter i knew he was like kind of like a t- uh, challenge for the title and i knew all that going in um but then it wasn't like i handled my business but then it wasn't until after till i actually like i looked up his ufc highlights and i'm like damn he was knocking guys out he was like demolishing dudes i was like damn like i fought that guy dude so it's just kind of like what the heck like it's kind of like it's two different sports but like their toughness is there like yeah it's it's a different sport in the sense of like the gloves and like the octagon and all that stuff but it's like i feel like there was awkward awkwardness and then they have a sense of toughness where like they're not going out like they don't want to get humiliated. They want to keep fighting. So like every time like I dropped him, he kept getting up. He kept getting up. And the ref just had to step in and do his job. But you definitely they have a huge amount of toughness. Yeah, it's interesting to see. Last weekend, I'm currently in Florida. I went to a, a local um event in Miami, Road Warriors promotion, and there is a fight between a a young guy who's five and oh six and oh i believe um and he fought an mma guy and the boxer won but there was some very awkward moments and the mma guy was very tough and it's uh you know you see a lot of these crossover fights right now that seems to all kind of fit that mold yeah and it's i feel like it's just like the same thing like i think if a boxer goes into mma they're they're gonna have a sense of toughness like they might not be able i guess like survive on the ground like like how UFC fighters can't really survive the best uh, standing up, but like the toughness is there. And I feel like both sports do recognize that. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. But to get back to, you know, your career, where you're going right now, um, what can we expect in terms of your activity um, in the next few years? Are you looking to have three, four fights a year, keep the ball rolling? 
Like, what are the plans for your team right now? I feel like um, this year, I think hopefully I have like two to three more fights this year and keep the ball rolling till next year. Uh, maybe four to five, six fights six year, depending on my health, depending on the opponent level. But my, my, my job is like, I understand it. Um, the fights are one in the gym. Like I'm in the gym training all the time. Um, I don't really post like all the time, like about it, but I'm always in the gym, always working. And I feel like that's, it's kind of like being consistent. Like you beat out like 95% of your competition by just being consistent. Cause that's the toughest thing in the sport today. hundred percent. And what are, what are your thoughts on some of the top guys at 130 right now and the surrounding weight divisions? There's a lot of noise, which is good. You know, it's not only the heavyweights that are bringing buzz and Canelo, of course, but the lower weight classes are on fire. Um, you know, at 130. Gervonta Davis, he recently fought at a higher weight, but he still holds a belt at 130. You got Jamel Herring, Shakur Stevenson. Um, I'm probably forgetting Oscar Valdez. Um, yeah. So a lot of a lot of great talent. What do you think about those guys? Um, at what point do you think you're going to be ready um, to be in a title fight years down the line or sooner. It's uh, I'd be curious to hear what your mindset is and your outlook on the deli- on the division. I feel like it's um, from going down to the 126 to 130 uh, to like all those all these guys. It's a really talented uh, era um, from the veterans like that are still in there to like the newcomers. Like you got the like the Shakurs, you have the Valdez out there, you have the Navarretes, you have you have all these tough guys at that in and around those late classes. And I just feel like there's a lot of great fights to make, regardless, um, regardless of who, who's in them. Um, it's talented. But for me, I feel like um, just keep working. I just need to keep working because I can't miss a step of the foundation. And eventually when the opportunity comes, cause this sport's crazy. So the main thing you need to stay in the gym because you never know, like you might move up fast in the rank, you might move up slow, but I say like three, 30 years or four years, I'll be up there with them. Yeah. You're still very young, 21 years old, correct? Yes. Yep. And, um, what are your thoughts on Oscar Valdez's last fight against Miguel Burchell? I don't know if you were able to watch that, but, it was one of the most just violent finishes um, I've seen in a long time. Um, he was able to, you know, stifle him later in those rounds. It was an absolute war. But my point in bringing that up is, you know, are you a fan of boxing as well? Like, are you watching all of the fights or are you more keep things internal, just focus on yourself, grind in the gym, or are you always watching the sport on the weekends as well and in an active fan? Um, like no one, no, no one had, no one has asked me this before, but like, I always like me to answer. Like, I feel like I'm a fan of the sport up to the point where like, I'm only watching the top guys and then I'm only watching the people um, I know, like I'm familiar with. So that Valdez fight, I knew it was a great fight, but me sparring, I sparred Valdez a couple of times and me knowing him and like, I just felt like Valdez was it going to pull it off. Um, I just felt like he, not like in the sense of like, he's going to box him off and do that. I just felt like he's going to grind it out. I know he's a hard worker and he's going to just going to pull it off. And I was just super happy for him, for him to be able to pull it off. And I was just, I just, I think he just like caught a lot of people off guard because they gave him no shot from him being two time Olympian. Um, I know like he had like, I don't want to say like he had bad experience because his jaw broke and he wasn't looking his best. But like I feel like him being in the ring with Burchett, he knew it was dangerous. He put in the work and he he got rewarded for it. Yeah, yeah, it was a tremendous finish. I'm I'm super excited to see what is what's next for him. And like I mentioned, there's so much talent in and around those divisions. There's going to be big fights the next few years. Um, but of those top guys that you mentioned that you do watch you know, outside of Canelo, who are, who are guys that you have your eye on um, that you try to learn from, or you're just a fan of, like, who are those guys that you tune in for? 
Uh, like recently, like, okay, the Valdez one, I, I attended to the, the Virgil one, um, the Jojo Diaz as well. Um, how do you see, who else? Like the Ryan Garcia's, the Devin, the Fimos, the, um, all those, those top competitors that, that they're, they're naming for the next generation. Like, um, I feel like they're really talented. Everybody's really talented. And you just kind of have to like, you watch them and you see, like some guys do something really, really good and you learn that part. And some guys like, they don't do something really well, but like that's at the end of the day, you kind of just have to pick what you like, pick what you can do and just keep working from there. Yeah, there's so many guys to watch right now. I mean, for me as a boxing fan, you know, it's it's awesome. I mean, you have the heavyweight division on fire. You got the lower weight classes going crazy. Yeah. And then you have Canelo floating up and down right now. There's rumors yeah. he's going to go to 175 maybe against Bivol or um, Biederbev, which would be – what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I, I'm a little confused. I don't know if Canelo – wow, I mean, that would be a big step up, right? Um, yeah, um, like I was like – I was telling – I was like kind of like think about these things like just kind of like predicted and stuff. But like I, I always been saying like, like a couple months back – uh, I think Triple G, he's going to fire Triple G September, plant in, plant in December, then next in February, maybe Bevo, and then wow. May, probably, <laughs> that would May, be a, probably, that May would, would be a like, crazy run. And then Benavides in May, and then like September will be Charlo, like something like that, something crazy like that. That, I mean, if he pulls that together, that is, that is a hell of a list. Um, the triple G trilogy too. I mean, that would be, that's always going to be a demand for that. We'll, we, we'll see if triple G uh, can turn back the clocks a little bit. If he's still got it, showed a little wear against Derevianchenko in his last fight. Yeah. And it's, whatever happens, I feel like a lot of people are still going to tune in. No whether doubt. It's Caleb, whether it's, he goes to PVC, whether he, anything. No doubt. He's a star right now. Well, you've had the opportunity to fight on the Canelo card, right? You got the biggest eyes on you um, in the sport. I want to ask, would you be willing to fight on the undercard of one of these YouTube or celebrity fights? We saw Billy Joe Saunders do it before he fought. Canelo, he fought on the undercard of, um, I believe it was a Logan Paul KSI. Would you be willing to take a slot like that on one of those, uh, cards or are you not, um, you know, you want to stay, stay away from that scene? Um, no, I'm, I'm here to, I'm a fighter. I'm here to fight, whether it's YouTube car, whether it's a Canelo card, like I'll, I'll gladly fight wherever it's at. And like, I feel like that's kind of like, how do you say it? Like me, I'm just a fighter. I'll fight on those cards the same way I'll fight because at the end of the day, those are, those are fans at the end of the day that tune in, come watch with their hard earned money, whether it's YouTube car, whether it's the biggest card of the year, I need to just showcase because it's, it's on me. Yeah, no, I love hearing that because, um, there's so many new eyeballs tuning in personally. I, at first I really wasn't a fan of the, of the YouTube scene and all, all of that noise going on. I'm still not a huge, you know, I'm still not loving it, but at the same time, um, hopefully the silver lining is there's so many new people coming in. So, so, so much of a new audience. And maybe when they see someone like yourself on the undercard or some of these other uh, great fighters who have done that, they'll stick around and they become a fan of you and they get into boxing. That's the, uh, the hope for boxing fans. Yeah. And it's like, um, like it's kind of like everybody's in their own lane. You just gotta, like, you probably probably never fight a YouTuber and a YouTuber knows like, Oh, I'll never fight like a real boxer. But at the end of the day, we're just in our own lane. We got to respect it. Just keep it moving because we're not always going to be here in this spot. So yeah. we just got to, it's just a little, little chapter. No doubt. No doubt. I think uh, also people want to know from you, obviously you're a pro boxer. You're a smart guy. 
what are you interested in outside of boxing? Like, what do you, what do you like doing in your free time when you're not training? Do you have in other interests and hobbies or things that you're passionate about? Well, like I like to play like video games and then I like to watch like NBA basketball. Like just like, I'm a big sports guy. I just like hanging out with my family and our friends and just, I guess like seeing like low key being private, but like at the same time preparing, paying attention to the boxing business and just kind of like just learning. Anything. I'm just a learner. That's good. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you didn't say going out and partying, you know, <laughs> I'm sure all the fans are excited that you, you answered that the way you did. That's good. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm super excited to watch your career on the rise right now. Only 21 years old, three and oh, and the sky is the limit. A lot of people are super excited for what is next for you. Um, if you want to, in closing here, give a shout out to where people can follow you and maybe any info on what could be next feel free to do so. Um, thank you for all the support. My next fight will possibly be the end of August and I believe in the California. Uh, we're just waiting for match room to announce it, but stay tuned. Follow me at, at Mark the Boxer, Mark with a C on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm just going to be giving the support all. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate the inv- the uh, the interview. Everyone watching, please go subscribe on YouTube at the Pod Matrix and follow me on Instagram at Brooklyn Boxing Podcast. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it.